Hello everyone and welcome to The Sweet Life and today we're going to be making a cookie sundae cake. Let's get started. So first we're going to start out with the cookie layer. I have a half stick of room temperature butter. Now I'm going to add that to my bowl. And to that, I'm going to add in a combination of sugars. I have white sugar and brown sugar. And I decided to use dark brown sugar, but you can use light brown sugar if you would like. I'm also going to add in an egg yolk. You don't need the entire egg, so you'll need to separate the yolk from the white. After I get that added in, I'm going to get this mixed in together with my hand mixer, making sure that I get everything nice and well incorporated. Once I see that it's mixed together well, I'm going to get my rubber spatula and scrape down the sides. And then I'm going to add in one cap full of pure vanilla extract to give it that nice warm flavor. I'm going to make sure that's well mixed in. Alright, so now it's time to get in my flour mixture which is all purpose flour, salt, and baking soda. I like to stir it in first so that I don't get a cloudy mess before I use my hand mixer. So now I'm going to use in my handy mixer. And as you can see, it's starting already to become a nice dough. That cookie dough that we all know and love. And again, I'm going to scrape down those sides. All right, and now it's almost time for me to add in my chips, my chocolate chips. I decided to use milk chocolate, but you can use semi-sweet mini chocolate chips if you'd like. And I'm just going to fold these chocolate chips in. And once I get these mixed in really well, I'm going to pop this dough into the freezer for about 10 minutes to chill. All right, it has chilled for about 10 minutes. So now I have a prepared six inch pan that has been greased. It has parchment paper at the bottom. And so I'm gonna get my dough and press this dough into the prepared pan. I wanna get it as nice and even as possible. I did notice that my dough was still a little bit sticky after I put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes. So I did use um, the measuring cup to kind of help me smooth out the edges. All right, so now it's ready to go into the oven. And I have a preheated oven for about 350 degrees and I'm gonna put it in there for 20 minutes. All right, now it's time to make our buttercream frosting. I'm going to put in the stand mixer a stick and a half of butter along with about two cups of shortening. To that, I'm going to add two capfuls of pure vanilla extract. Then I'm going to put on my whisk attachment and get this mixture nice and smooth. Now I'm going to add in some powdered sugar. Now, some people like to sift out their powdered sugar first, but I've never had a problem with any type of lumps in my frosting, so I just added it right in. And I like to give it a nice stir. If you've made frosting before, you know that the powdered sugar can kind of create a cloud if you don't get it mixed in first. And now I'm going to add my whisk attachment back on. And I'm going to mix this at low speed to start out with and then I'll increase it just a little bit. Total time I'm going to whisk this is going to be about three minutes. It's going to come together really, really nicely. So now it's at that nice whipped um, frosting consistency that we all love. So this is going to be nice and spreadable and light.
All right, so now it's time for the chocolate cake. I am using a box cake mix, but you can use um, any recipe that you would like. I'm adding in some milk. Now I'm gonna add in some oil. That's gonna give it um, a nice moist taste. And I'm adding in some vanilla flavoring, about two teaspoons. And I'm gonna add in the eggs one at a time. I'm adding my paddle attachment now. Right, and then I'm going to beat this until it is nice and smooth. Again, I'm gonna add in the eggs one at a time. And you'll know the mixture is ready when it starts to look like chocolate pudding. Really, really nice and smooth. And then I'm going to put these evenly into two six inch pans, putting them into a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. All right, so now I have my two chocolate layers, my cookie dough layer, and also my mini cupcakes. I had a little extra batter left over, so I made the mini cupcakes. All right, so I'm putting down my first layer, and I'm going to begin to frost. And I want this to be a nice, even frosting without having too many crumbs. So I used um, the piping bag, and now I'm smoothing it out with my offset spatula now it's time for my cookie layer as you can see it had kind of a divot in the middle so i wanted to make sure i piped icing in the middle so that when my last layer went on it would be nice and even but i did spread some frosting out to the side all right time for the last layer Putting it on top, and this is a chance for you to make sure that your cake is going to be nice and even all the way around. All right, putting on the top layer of frosting. Again, making sure that I have a nice even coat so I don't have a lot of crumbs. And then next, I'm going to pipe along the outside of the cake. Now, just depending on how much of a perfectionist you are, this can probably be like the most tedious part because it's gonna take some time to get everything nice and even for you to fill in any holes and gaps that you may have. I'm not the best froster, I will admit that, but I was trying to get it as even as possible. I did have to refill my piping bag to get more on. And now again, I have my offset spatula. I'm just gonna smooth it out as best I can. Moving the turntable around um, to kind of help me out a little bit. All right. And every once in a while, I did have to, you know, get a little bit more frosting to try to fill in the gaps. But I think I did pretty good. It got a pretty good even layer. Now it's time to decorate my favorite part. I have some chocolate wafers that I'm going to use. I have the mini chocolate muffins and also some chocolate chips that I'm going to use to decorate as well as my chocolate fudge that I'm gonna put around the edge of the cake and also have a bag full of frosting with a star tip. I'm decorating the mini cupcakes first. And I'm gonna place some sprinkles on top just to add a little festiveness to the cupcakes. Everybody likes sprinkles, right? They are perfect with a sundae. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the chocolate fudge to the edge of the cake. I wanted to actually go for a drip effect, but I didn't add enough heavy cream to this melted chocolate for it to really drip down. But it actually did end up being like a hot fudge um, consistency that would go on a sundae, so I was happy with it. It wasn't perfect, but you know, when you're decorating, it's about having fun and I made it for my family and they really, really did enjoy it. All right, just finishing, putting it around the edge there, trying to get it as even as possible. All 
right? And if you're at this part and it seems like the chocolate is getting a little bit stiff for you, you can pop it in the microwave for a little bit longer so that um, you can have a smoother consistency. All right, so now I have my piping bag fitted with my star tip and I'm just gonna do a ripple border at the bottom. This is where your creativity can come in. You can create any type of border that you would like. Fit it with any type of tip that you like. Alright, now I'm going to put on the mini cupcakes. I thought these were so fun. Um, if somebody doesn't want a whole piece of cake, they could just take the miniature cupcake. So I thought it would definitely be a fun accent. Make sure that you don't get the miniature cupcakes too close to the edge so that they don't fall off. I did have a little bit of an accident with one of my miniature cupcakes, but I got it fixed. So in between the cupcakes, I'm adding a dollop of um, the buttercream frosting. Alright, and those dollops are going to be prepared for my wafer candies that I'm going to add in between. I got those little wafer candies um, at my local Aldi. They're so good. They're actually like hazelnut and I cut them in half. And now I'm adding some sprinkles to the bottom. Again, it just gives the cake like a nice rest of flair and, and it's what you need for a sundae. I mean, no sundae is complete without sprinkles. And again, you can get more creative. Um, you can add some brownie pieces if you would like. Um, if you like M&Ms, um, you can add some some of those candies to it. Right now, I'm adding in um, just a final touch um, with some chocolate chips at the bottom. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know what you like to see next. Bye-bye.